WWE Chairman Vince McMahon set to make his in-ring return at the age of 76 years old at WrestleMania 38, if rumours and reports are to be believed. Plus, we have news on the big WrestleMania 38 main event between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns now becoming a championship unification match. Also, Ronda Rousey is set to make her SmackDown in-ring debut next week. All this and more in today's WWE News. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestle News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. Having a good Sunday. We've got to start off by talking about Vince McMahon. 76-year-old WWE Chairman and CEO Vince McMahon reportedly is set to step back inside the squared circle. This is a madness. An absolute madness. And it's a weird one because the reports have actually, well, rumours, shall we say, unsubstantiated, and this hasn't been confirmed yet, but rumours have been out there for a couple of weeks, maybe about the last 10 days or so, that maybe Vince McMahon, the WWE chairman, despite being in his mid-70s, was thinking about stepping back inside of the ring for a match at WrestleMania, and it looks like that's where we're headed, because... And I want to do this. I want to do this right. I want to get the right chronology on all of this. So the rumors were out there. The, the, the rumors started Friday. I mean, the rumors been out there for a while, but certainly they picked up a lot of steam Friday because before SmackDown on Friday, it was reported that Pat McAfee, WWE SmackDown commentator, was scheduled for a big angle at WrestleMania 38. Now, at the time, we didn't know what the angle was. That was just a rumor out there. It was according to Ringside News and a couple of other reports said Pat McAfee is going to be involved in something big at WrestleMania. At the time, nobody knew who he was going to be working with, what the angle was going to be. People just said, okay, Pat McAfee's going to be working a match. Fine. I like Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee's been great. Since coming into commentary after WrestleMania last year, he's been a breath of fresh air. And when he's worked in matches before against Adam Cole in NXT TakeOvers or in war games for NXT in his feud of Adam Cole, it's brilliant. So I thought, you know what? I like Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee is uh, a lot of fun. So that's going to be interesting to see what that's going to happen. Then during SmackDown, it was announced that WWE Chairman and CEO Vince McMahon was set to be a special guest on the Pat McAfee show next Thursday. And everyone went, okay, what is going on now? Now, right now, there's no word on when Vince's interview will begin. But the Pat McAfee show starts streaming at 12 noon Eastern time. The Pat McAfee show airs on YouTube and on Sirius XM channel 82 every Monday to Friday. This is going to happen on Thursday right before SmackDown the following night, it must be said as well. I think WWE looking at this and going, man, Brock Lesnar was recently on the Pat McAfee show, and that interview was probably the best interview Brock Lesnar's ever done, and not in just his professional wrestling career, but just in his his whole media life. It's been the best interview he's done. You got to see the real Brock Lesnar, the character. He wasn't nervous. He wasn't, you know... Um, combative with the interviewer. Pat McAfee does a great job in interviewing anyone on his show. And it got a ton of press. People were talking about it all over social media. And I think that raised the people's eyebrow, if you will, of Vince McMahon and WWE. They went, hmm, that got a lot of people talking. We can do something with Pat McAfee's show. So, and Vince McMahon does not do interviews. The reason Vince McMahon does not do interviews is because historically, when he does interviews, (laughs) <laughs> they just don't go well because rightfully so media personalities if he goes on NBC News or he goes on HBO Sports or he does whatever they ask him the tough questions that he should be asked and he gets very defensive and combative and then you get this because Vincent Mann is like this so I think WWE are looking at this going actually, actually I tell you what Vince McMahon can go on the Pat McAfee show. Pat McAfee will ask him questions, but they won't be hard-hitting questions. It will just be a relaxed environment, all that kind of stuff, and a bit of the brown nose society, you know, when you're a great boss or you're great at commentary, blah, blah, blah. And the interviews will last about an hour and a half. It's a long-form interview as well. And you'll get that, and you'll see a different side of Vince and a side of Vince that we haven't seen in a really long time, if ever. So people are going to be talking about that. And reportedly... Whilst he's on that show, Vince Man is going to shoot an angle for a match at WrestleMania. Yes. <laughs> so the new report comes from Post Wrestling, it must be said. Post Wrestling are the first people to actually fully say, yep, this is happening. Again, the rumors had been out there for a little bit, but the Post Wrestling are the first people to say, yep, this match is happening. Now, 
There had been recent rumours, as I mentioned, about Vince possibly wrestling a match. But now John Pollock of Post Wrestling reports that Vince is scheduled to begin a programme with SmackDown commentator Pat McAfee soon. And that feud will include a WrestleMania 38 match. It was noted how multiple sources have stated that McAfee and McMahon are planned for something at WrestleMania 38. According to the report, a source close to the situation was asked if McMahon versus McAfee will be billed as an official match on the WrestleMania 38 card. And they responded responded, quote, most likely. This report on Vince returning to the ring comes after, as I mentioned, it was reported previously that McAfee was scheduled for a WrestleMania 38 feud. It was then announced that um, McMahon was going to be on the Pat McAfee show. Now, Vince McMahon, who is 76 years old, has not wrestled an actual match since losing the no-holds-barred lumberjack match to WWE Hall of Famer Bret Hart at WrestleMania 26 in 2010, 12 years ago. Now, he did technically, I suppose, have a match with CM Punk in October of 2012 on Monday Night Raw. He's done a few physical angles over the last few years, such as the headbutt and frog splash from Kevin Owens, which was 2017 on SmackDown. He got slapped by AJ Styles, I think, maybe the year after that. But he's 76 years old. He should not be wrestling matches. And I've seen some people respond to this report and say... Yeah, but John Pollock, post-wrestling, I'll wait till I hear a more reputable person say it. Dave Meltzer from the Wrestling Observer Newsletter has also come out and said Vince McMahon versus Pat McAfee is reportedly listed on the internal schedule for WrestleMania 38. Now, I know some people will say Dave Meltzer, when it comes to WWE, is he credible? Is, is he not credible? We haven't seen anyone from, say, PW Insider or Fightful Select come out and confirm it. I think they're working on it. But all of the right noises are being made here that something is going to happen at WrestleMania, which is crazy. Now, I don't think I don't think we are going to see a proper Vince McMahon versus Pat McAfee match. I would probably think we see some kind of I think the better way to describe it would be an angle in that it's billed as Vince McMahon versus Pat McAfee. I think Vince McMahon comes out in the vest you know, and his just freakish physique at 76 years of age. I think that happens. Austin Theory has been Vincent Mann's protege on Monday Night Raw, so I would expect a large degree of physicality from Vince McMahon, from Pat McAfee, rather, and Austin Theory at WrestleMania. And maybe Vince takes a bump. Maybe Vince takes a bump or takes a couple of bumps. That's about it, I would expect. I mean... Even at WrestleMania 26, with that Lumberjack match with Bret Hart, he took way too many bumps then. That was 12 years ago. So at the time, Vince McMahon was, what, 64? <laughs> and he was taking chair shots, and he took a um, a heart attack on the outside of the ring from Tyson Kidd and, and um, D.H. Smith, the Davey Boy Smith Jr., that was brutal. He must have got a concussion. And... I don't ex expect we see the same. We see some kind of smoke and mirrors thing. I, I think the the over the reaction to it, as many people are saying, is like a seventy six year old man's going to be wrestling a match. I don't I don't suspect that. I think we do see smoke and mirrors. I think Vince will take a bump, which again is crazy because he's seventy six, and, and I'm not really sure how I feel about that. I think a lot of people how they've been looking at it is probably fair in the sense that. WWE's got a challenge this year, a massive challenge that not that they're struggling with, but it's proving to be somewhat difficult in that WrestleMania is a two night event, which it has been for the last couple of years. Right. 2020 was because of the pandemic. Last year was again because of the pandemic. But when they were in Raymond James Stadium, they weren't operating at full capacity. What was it? 30 percent capacity, something of that nature. So it wasn't a ton of tickets to sell this year. It's a two night event, but there's a lot of tickets to sell. You know, it's AT&T Stadium, 100,000 people. And whilst they don't actually have to get 200,000 people through the door, because chances are if you go to one night, you'll probably go to the next night. But still, you might be looking at maybe 150,000 people, 125,000 people that you have to individually, that you have to sell tickets to. That's why they're doing those two-for-one offers. That's why they're saying, you know, two-for-one offer on WrestleMania tickets and all that kind of stuff is because they need to sell tickets and they want to sell tickets. And they are throwing 
everything at the wall to make those ticket sales happen. Whether it's a championship unification match, billing the main event as the biggest main event in WrestleMania history, whether it's getting Vince McMahon to wrestle a match, whether it's getting The Undertaker in the Hall of Fame, whether it's Stone Cold Steve Austin having his first match in God knows how long, nearly 20 years, they are throwing everything out there with the hope that when they fill up this card as much as they can, they will be able to sell out both nights of at t Stadium, which is a big ask, in for WWE. So that's why they're doing it. So I know a lot of people were sort of like, oh, I can't believe it, 76 years of age, and I can't believe it, <laughs> 76 years of age. But I don't think we should be like, I can't believe a 76-year-old is having a match because he's not. He, he's just not. And if, But on the flip side, he's Vince McMahon. He's crazy. So I wouldn't be shocked if he, <laughs> if he does have matches. I'm morbidly fascinated because I think I don't even necessarily care that much about the spectacle of the match that he has at WrestleMania because, uh, you know, who cares? I'm just fascinated in what his interview with Pat McAfee next week is going to look like. Because go back and watch any Vince McMahon media interview. They do not go well. <laughs> they don't. Even some that he's had... For his own company, when he had the podcast with Stone Cold Steve Austin live, and he was Steve Austin's first guest on the WWE Network, that went terribly as well. He buried like half his roster. Cesaro's just been released. Well, maybe it's because he's Swiss. Everyone's like, "What? <laughs> what are you want about?" And I'm sure he'll do the same. I'm so I'm fascinated by that aspect of it. <sighs> got to sell tickets. I suppose one thing you can credit Vince McMahon for is that when push comes to shove, he'll do anything. When it comes to, and, and he's done it before, when it comes to him putting himself on the line, putting himself in the ring to sell tickets, he'll do it. You know, so I guess you have to credit him for that. But some would say it reeks of desperation. Some would say it's genius. I don't know. I, I It's car crash kind of promotion, right? You just you tune in to see what, what it looks like. <laughs> Vince McMahon, the match, the angle. And I guess that's promotion, but oh, it's just wild. Obviously, once things get announced, we'll talk about it more. I'm thinking of going live right after the Pat McAfee show on Thursday. If that's something you'd be interested in, let me know in the comment section below, because I think it's going to be that big. <laughs> I really, really do. So who knows? Who knows what that's going to look like? Um, let's talk about the WrestleMania main events, of course, the championship unification. This is also fascinating as well, isn't it? Because so initially... <laughs> After Brock Lesnar won the WWE Championship at Elimination Chamber, it was billed as champion versus champion. Then it was billed as title versus title. Now, it's the biggest WrestleMania match of all time, winner-take-all championship unification. So it's now become not just title for title in terms of winner-take-all. It's now becoming the WWE Championship and Universal Championship are being unified. They're becoming one coming out of WrestleMania. As I mentioned, uh, WWE originally billed Lesnar versus Reigns as a title versus title match or a champion versus champion bout, but then it was made clear that it would be a winner takes all match, opening the door for another title change down the line or to have two champions again. But WWE now has updated all of the previews for the match and also they confirmed it on SmackDown that it's a winner take all championship unification match. So this is quite curious because I think it speaks for much bigger plans in the future. There have been some rumors, unsubstantiated again, about WWE possibly doing away with the brand split after WrestleMania 38. That seems unlikely, to be honest with you, because Fox and USA, or Fox and NBC Universal, are very keen on having their own separate rosters for their own shows. That's what they want. They want to have their own stars. And I don't necessarily see the brand split going away. I don't. I think we go back to what was the plan in 2002 when you had the original brand extension was that you had Raw, you had SmackDown as the separate brands, and then you had the world champion at the top of that tree who would be on both shows. If you were the world champion, you could be on both shows. And both brands, you know, you would have feuds that sort of went between both shows. You'd have a Raw feud for the world championship, and you'd also have a SmackDown feud for the world championship. And they would cross over, and that would be how they did it. And I've seen, a, it's, it's really interesting, this, because I've seen a lot of different opinions and differing opinions on this one. I really don't mind it. And I know people don't like this. I know people say you need two titles because you need two shows, all that kind of stuff. 
My argument to that is that the WWE Championship at this point is the secondary title. There is no argument about that. There just there there is no argument about that. The WWE Championship very 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 rarely main events a show. I know it did just at the Elimination Chamber and Brock Lesnar, but that's because it was for this match coming up. Otherwise, Roman Reigns main events every show or every pay per view pretty much. The WWE title was a secondary title at this point. It's like when you had the WWE Championship in the past and the World Heavyweight Championship in sort of the, the late 2000s or early you know 2010s kind of period of time. The World Heavyweight title was a secondary title. It, it just, it was. And I, I, I really don't have a problem. And I think that, you know, it also makes sense from the perspective of how do you make this match feel bigger? This match has been done to death. R- really, it has, hasn't it? The, the match has been done to absolute death. That we've seen Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar a multitude of t- multitude of times. Granted, the situation is different now. You know, the situation is different in the sense that you know Brock's the babyface, Roman's the heel. I understand that, but you did the match at Crown Jewel last year. Where's the stakes? Where's 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 the where's the new in this? You've done Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns as a WrestleMania main event twice as well. So you have to raise the stakes, and that's what they're doing. They're raising the stakes, and they're firmly... I know some people say, oh, Brock might win. Roman Reigns is winning this match. He's unifying the World Championships because they're putting everything on Roman. Because, and I've said this a million times, in my opinion, the plan is build Roman, build Roman, build Roman. Roman Reigns versus The Rock at WrestleMania 39 next year, which Roman will then win again. And then whoever beats Roman for that title that he has held for such a long period of time, that's the next guy. That's the star they want to build. Who that is, I have no idea. I don't see anyone on the roster that that is right now. But there's plenty of time between now and then. That's my feeling on it. So I know some people hate this. And I understand the the analogy and the discussion about you know WWE essentially burying their roster like they did with the Elimination Chamber main event. To get to this, and then Brock goes, and then what do you have left? Nothing. Ashes. That's the problem. But I don't have a problem with this main event. What else would you do? What's a bigger match right now? That's always my response. They, they, they sell a rematch. Okay, but what's the bigger main event? Tell me a bigger main event on the roster. <laughs> Tell me a bigger main event than this. That's just that's my feeling on that. Um, we'll get through a couple of other quick stories here. Ronda Rousey is set to make her SmackDown in-ring debut next week. It's actually going to be her first one-on-one match since March 2019. She's going to be facing Sonya Deville. Uh, as I mentioned, it's going to be her first match since her Beat the Clock win over Sarah Logan on the March 25th, 2019 episode of Monday Night Raw. Uh, it's also going to be uh, SmackDown's, uh, Ronda Rousey's first ever SmackDown match. Um, of course, Ronda Rousey's going to win. <laughs> um... <laughs> I just, uh, this this whole Charlotte Flair, Ronda Rousey feud, again, I just don't really have a lot of attachment to it. I, I don't. And Ronda Rousey also did a, a YouTube um, video this past week. And she spoke about her interactions with Vince McMahon and her return to WWE at the Royal Rumble, all that kind of stuff. And she spoke about um, returning and her feeling towards the fans. She said, quote, I really miss wrestling. I did. And I wanted to come back. I knew I was coming back or thought I did uh, to the animosity that I left. So I came out feeling super defensive from the beginning. At the Rumble, it wasn't like that. But I just assumed the reaction was from the surprise. So coming out to Raw and Becky was going to be there, I was like, okay, this is when they're going to troll on me the most. This is when they're going to try and chant like Becky every single time I open my mouth. This is the time they're going to start screaming the most hurtful things they can. Uh, this is when they're going to start bringing the posters that say the most hurtful things they can think of and so I came out anticipating that I mean everything went fine of course there were like those three or four guys on the floor that were just screaming as I was talking and I had to, to really concentrate to block them out and she spoke about how you know Vince McMahon and Paul Heyman talking to her telling her to smile saying you know don't hold this animosity or this kind of stuff Ronda Rousey is a very strange um individual in that this is a work (laughs) like Roman Reigns has entered the chat the people were booing her towards the end of her first run because she can come off as unlikable and that's why and also as well 
Becky Lynch at the time was super, super over. She was the most popular star, not as female star, star in WWE at the time. And people wanted to see her win. And because and because of that, it made Ronda Rousey the heel. But also, Ronda Rousey says, I enjoyed being a heel. So you're going to get booed. Like, that's the business. And especially nowadays, baby faces don't universally get cheered. They get booed. It's life. Some people don't like you. And for whatever reason... She gets upset with people when they don't like her and <laughs> defensive. And a lot like a lot of people said online, it's a work. Like people won't like you. And can you imagine Roman Reigns for all those years with John Cena going out there getting booed when they're the baby face and then trying to say it's the fans' fault? No, it's not. This is always I, I say this so many times as well. When people get so you know, angry with the crowd, or the crowd's trolling. Sometimes the crowd does troll, and it's like well, you're trying to get yourself over, which is dumb. But a lot of the time, it's not an indictment on the person in the ring. It's an indictment on the creative. It's an indictment on the product. It's an indictment on people writing the show or producing the show or directing the show. It's an indictment of, we don't like what we're watching in the ring. It's not an indictment they don't like Ronda Rousey. They don't like Ronda Rousey's character. Or they don't like Ronda Rousey's booking, and they're telling the people watching the sh- that are making the show they don't like it. And uh, and the fans get a bad rap for for voicing their opinions, which I don't I don't understand. As long as it's respectful and they don't cross a line, which fans do, and that's wrong. But I just uh, I don't understand that. Uh, Sasha Banks, of course, is back, and we have an update when it comes to her WrestleMania plans. It looks like she's going to be challenging for the SmackDown Women's Championship at WrestleMania with Naomi. And I get that she has to have something to do, but I would also look at it as like. Uh, the the smack the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships mean nothing. <laughs> they mean, I mean, they do. They mean absolutely nothing. Uh, and the only thing I can think of is that they they win them at WrestleMania, try to put some heat back on them. That they mean something, and then you have the Bella Twins come back. Then you have Lee and Trish Stratus. Then you maybe have Bailey come back with a tag team partner. Then maybe they do mean something. Maybe you get I don't know Ask Renio Shirai as a tag team or something like that. But at the moment, well, they're pointless. <laughs> they mean nothing. So I, I guess Sasha Banks just you need something to do, right? Uh, finally, Johnny Knoxville's back on WWE television. He came back on SmackDown on Friday. Um, Sami Zayn was in the ring celebrating his Intercontinental Title victory over Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura. This is when Johnny Knoxville came out. Um, the crowd chanted Johnny. He challenged him to a match which Zayn didn't accept. Um, it led to a physical confrontation where Sami Zayn attacked Johnny Knoxville in the ring. He delivered two halluva kicks. The first one, he completely missed. <laughs> like the camera angle, in fairness, the camera angle did him no favours. If the camera angle was the, the second camera angle they used on the floor and then they cut away, it would have looked okay. But the first one was terrible. He completely missed. Second one, he, he legitimately just kicked him in the face. And I saw that and I cringed because Johnny Knoxville has just done a, a million different interviews talking about how he got brain damage when he did his uh, ball stunt on Jackass in the Jackass movie, which, by the way, I watched. It was tremendous. But he's talked about how he got really bad brain damage, and he's wrestling. And, like, it's true. Like, Daniel Bryan was forced to retire by WWE for four years. Well, how many years was it? Two years? However, whatever. He was forced to retire because of that. But Johnny Knoxville was fine. That doesn't seem right. He just got kicked in the face by Sami Zayn. So it looks like we're going to get Johnny Knoxville versus Sami Zayn at WrestleMania for the Intercontinental Championship. There's no way Johnny Knoxville can win, <laughs> right? He's got to be one of the rare celebrities that loses. He has to. I mean, oh, can you imagine? Um, as if the Intercontinental Championship doesn't mean much anyway. Anyway, there was a, an angle backstage afterwards where Sami Zayn was talking to Adam Pearce. Ricochet came in and Ricochet gets a title match next week. The only thing I could see is maybe Ricochet wins the Intercontinental title. And then you get a WrestleMania Sami Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville, just not for the title. That's how Johnny Knoxville wins. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't. But anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on today's WWE news in the comment section below. Be sure to like and subscribe to Wrestle News 365. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.